Hi, I'm Charlotte Frassa, second year PhD student in computational neuroscience, and I'm almost at the halfway point of my PhD. So I thought this would be a perfect time to kind of give you guys some tips that I wish I had when I started my PhD, and hopefully they will help you a lot. So I will give you some insight into how to do research better, how to schedule this better, how to keep your energy levels up, and also how to keep motivated for your PhD. So hopefully you will learn a lot and let's get straight into it. So the first thing I would really recommend you getting if you are just starting your PhD or even if you are already a little bit further in your PhD is to get this ID bank. So this is kind of a dedicated place on your laptop or even a booklet where you write down all the ideas you have throughout the year. And I made a Notion page for this, so I will put it up now. So on my Notion page, I have for every idea that I had throughout the year, I make a dedicated page. And on that page, I usually put some thoughts or some queries that I had when I was thinking of this idea. Because what you will start to notice with your PhD is that usually you will have one main project, that is the project that you focus on and that you dedicate your time towards. But throughout the year, you usually get a lot of new ideas. For example, if you go to a conference and you talk to a really interesting professor, they usually give you some tips or some tricks to elevate your idea to the next level, or they give you some advice on a new idea that you could start or a new project. And the thing I noticed is if you don't have a dedicated place that you put your projects in or your ideas in, that they kind of get lost over time and you kind of forget them. And then usually when the point comes that you finished part of your main project or if you see that your main project is actually not working out, it's sometimes really hard to come on the spot up with a new idea. So that's why I would really recommend to have this dedicated place where you put all your ideas. And I kind of want to take you through how I schedule it or how I put it in my bank or Notion page. So as you see in my Notion page, I have these different sections of the PhD that I found important. And then in the thesis planning section, I have this dedicated page where I put, for example, Bayesian networks, extreme value, theory, brain aging, and different methods. And for example, on their extreme value theory, which is something I'm working on now, we can then see that I put all the thoughts that I had throughout the year for this project. And usually I deep dive into some smaller themes or projects from this extreme value theory during that time. And by having these blocks and different parts of my projects all in one page. This really, for me, inspires me and allows me to generate a lot of ideas. So usually I'm working on one main project throughout the year, but I also have a lot of side projects that I'm kind of simultaneously working on a little bit throughout the year as well. And the second tip I want to give you that I wish someone told me at the beginning is to say no more often. So during your PhD, there will be so many amazing opportunities. You can do teaching, you can go to conferences, you can help professors with their coding projects and maybe get your name on their paper, for example. And all of these projects are usually really interesting and super valuable. But the one thing you don't have endless amount of is time. And I started to notice quite quickly in my PhD that I said yes a lot. But then in the end, I didn't have any time left for my own project. And in the end, the main purpose of your PhD is to finish your own projects and your own coding work. So if you don't have time to do this, there is something that you will have to say no towards. And that could be that you do a little bit less teaching or you don't go to all the lectures, for example. And it will be quite hard in the beginning to really see what you find important and what you don't find important. But as a general rule, I now usually ask myself this one question to see if I really want to do this thing or not. And that's just, does this thing give me energy? Yes or no? And if it gives me energy and I really enjoy doing it, I usually say yes. And if it depletes my energy and I don't really enjoy doing it, then I usually say no. And of course, there are some things that you have to do in your PhD, some administrative work that no one enjoys. But in general, this question really allows me to say yes and no to the right things for me. And kind of following on that note for tip three, I want to say to you to 
keep in mind what you want to do after because I think once you have a really clear goal or you're quite sure of what you want to do after it's a little bit easier to navigate what you want to do in your PhD so for example if you know already that you want to go to a company afterwards it's maybe good during your PhD to already focus on projects where you can really show your coding skills whereas for example if you know already that you want to go on a tenure track and try to become a professor maybe it's it's good to get a little bit more teaching experience in at the beginning and kind of thinking about what you want to do after really allows you to say yes and no to the right things in your PhD and I've also seen that people that are a little bit more clear what they want to do after tend to stress less actually during their PhD because once you know what you have to say yes to us there's so many things that you can just kind of put to the sidelines and ignore during your PhD. So the third thing I want to recommend you really to do is to take care of your health and your relationships. So a PhD is a really long time. In the Netherlands it takes about four years to complete your PhD. So if during your student years you kind of got in this habit of really cramming and procrastinating, I think during your PhD that's really a habit you need to let go of because if you don't value your health and your relationships in four years they will all be gone basically and it just helps you so much if you have a solid foundation in your relationships and in your health to actually get better at doing your PhD work and doing your science work. So if you have the tendency, and I personally have this tendency when you're really stressed to put your relationships to the side and kind of ignore your health, I think it's good to just block in really strict schedules of working out, for example, or seeing your friends or having downtime during certain weekends, for example. And this helped me at least tremendously to keep focusing on the things that are really important because even though science and your PhD is really important and really valuable, I also think relationships and your health make up a really big part of your life as well. So my last advice and that helped me maybe the most I think is to have another project beside your PhD. Something that you can focus on and put all your creativity towards. So for me that project is YouTube right now but there are a lot of projects that you can think of starting that will really help you create I think another focus point in your life that you can put your attention towards. So for example you could think of starting a blog, learning how to program, doing YouTube or maybe even picking up a musical instrument and I would personally pick something creative because I think having something really creative in your life as well sparks joy and energy but also in the sense that having something beside your PhD that you can learn from I've noticed that usually this kind of circles back into your PhD so for example in my PhD I now got asked for my TA job to also help with a little bit of editing and a little bit of outreach and I really noticed that I learned these skills through YouTube but now I can actually actually use them again in my PhD and that makes me just feel really good and really valuable. So even if for example you think that music won't help you in your PhD, I guess you will be surprised when you really start deep diving into another project how much this tunnels back. And what I've also seen is that if you then get stuck for example in your PhD on a certain project, you can work on your other project that you find really important. And this kind of gives you a balance in life. Then instead of putting all your eggs in one basket, which is your PhD, you have something else that you are also cultivating and getting really good at. Because for me, one of the most important things of your PhD is that it's the one moment that you can learn anything you want. You dedicated four years of your life to learning, creativity and wisdom. And I think you should really grasp this chance if you can. So thank you for listening. These were all the tips I had for first years. And if you're starting your PhD, I'm really curious what the topic will be. So put it down in the comments below. And also if you're thinking of starting a PhD and you have any questions, please tell me and also put it down in the comments below. And otherwise, see you next week. Bye.